very warm welcome to our viewers on every continent but Antarctica. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10. If you're wondering why we didn't have a show yesterday, the reason's just a few minutes away after we make stops in the Caribbean and South America. Let's go. U.S. Central Intelligence Agency says Haiti, an island nation between the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, has had political struggles for most of its history. One is occurring right now. Since February 7th, violent and deadly protests have been held in the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince. Cars have been burned. Protesters have fought with police. The U.S. State Department says violent crime, like armed robbery, is common in Haiti, and that responses to emergency calls are either limited or they don't happen at all. Demonstrators want President Jovenel Moise to resign. They blame him for the soaring costs of goods and corruption within the government. On Saturday night, the nation's prime minister asked for calm and acknowledged there is corruption in Haiti, but that the government would fight and uncover it. And President Moise says he will not leave Haiti, quote, in the hands of armed gangs and drug traffickers. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. More than half the population lives below the national poverty line. And there are questions about some arrests that were made in the past few days. Haiti's government says seven of the eight people taken into custody aren't from Haiti. The situation on the ground here in the capital is sort of a, a tenuous calm. The government has asked all sectors from uh, the schools to the, the public agencies to businesses to reopen and get back to some state of, of normalcy today. The schools have not reopened, but some gas stations have, some businesses have, uh, and the agencies, the, the, the government seems to be coming back uh, as well. But there are rumors and talk about more protests ahead. Uh, there uh, appear to be some efforts to block roads in certain parts uh, of the capital and possibly other uh, areas of the country. That is what the police are on high alert for now. Uh, about the eight individuals arrested, they had a ton of guns on them, many automatic weapons that would have to be registered in the country, as well as radios. Uh, five of them were Americans. All this as the government, uh, government officials are telling us that there are foreign forces, uh, influences out there that are, are trying to destabilize the, the country throughout these protests. In other words, the, the protests that we saw over the last uh, nine, ten days or so last week were not just an expression of popular revolt and, and upset with the government, but that there was something more at play here. Whether or not they make that argument later as, as these individuals are arraigned, we will find out. But uh, certainly another level of intrigue uh, uh, here in the Capitol. And between the protesters and the president, there appears to be a stalemate. They want him to resign still. He is holding fast and saying he will not resign. The hope is uh, from the government is that the, the measures announced by the prime minister uh, over the weekend, uh, a 30 percent cut to his budget, an uh, end to government uh, worker perks, uh, an increase in the minimum wage, all those things will buy them enough breathing room and placate protesters that they will go back to work uh, and stop trying to shut down the country. Miguel Marquez, CNN, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Moving southeast across the Caribbean from Haiti, we come to the South American nation of Venezuela. With an economy that's falling apart, it's a country in need of supplies like food and medicine. It's a country that's been sent supplies from the U.S. and several other nations. But the question is, will Venezuela's government actually let those items through the borders it's closed? President Nicolas Maduro says the aid isn't needed and that it's part of an attempt planned by the U.S. to knock him out of power. U.S. Senator Marco Rubio, who visited the border between Venezuela and Colombia yesterday, said it'd be a crime against humanity if President Maduro doesn't allow the supplies in. The group that opposes him plans to bring in the shipments on February 23rd, so the world will be watching what happens this weekend when truckloads of supplies approach the Venezuelan border. It isn't just a mission to deliver basic goods. It's a mission to deliver hope. Over the weekend, three planes carrying 66 metric tons of humanitarian relief made its way to the Venezuelan border with Colombia. The supplies, part of an effort led by the USAID and both the Departments of Defense and State. And these are the, just the basic necessities. State Department official Julie Chung helped lead the mission to assist the millions impacted by what she called a man-made crisis created by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The only thing that's stopping us is the Maduro regime. We've seen them block the bridges, block the roads, and it's an abomination to humanity to stop basic necessities and goods from entering your country to help your own people. Is there any concern that something like this would provoke 
him from doing something even more drastic, that this could perhaps be seen as uh, p further politicizing a crisis. If anyone's politicizing the crisis, it's Maduro. Lester Toledo, a representative of self-declared interim Venezuelan president Juan Guaido, joined the U.S. officials on the trip to the border. He was there when the first stage of U.S. aid arrived on the Venezuelan border February 8th. I asked him if this is the year Venezuela will turn the corner. He said he thinks it'll happen in a matter of weeks. This is the second shipment of humanitarian aid sent by the U.S. government to help Venezuela in the last two weeks. They say it's part of their commitment to interim president Juan Guaido. And inside these pallets, they say, is enough to feed 3,500 children and up to 25,000 adults. Landing in Colombia, the humanitarian convoy was greeted by USAID director Mark Green. He said the aid is arriving at the most critical time. In a matter of minutes, the supplies were offloaded and driven to this warehouse in Cucuta, Colombia, positioned only a few hundred yards from Venezuela. The question now, with the border closed and Maduro's regime showing no sign of backing down, how to get the supplies to the people who need it most. Maybe you owned government class. Maybe you can name all the U.S. presidents. But do you know who's honored by President's Day? You could have asked Calvin Coolidge, but he might have been silent on the matter. Teddy Roosevelt might have walked softly around the subject, despite being a rough rider. Most Americans believe President's Day is about every president we've had. But that's kind of wrong, at least as far as its origin goes. President's Day was originally Washington's birthday, just Washington's, on February 22nd. It became a federal holiday in 1885, and as far as the U.S. government's concerned, it's still Washington's birthday, not President's Day. In 1968, Congress voted to switch it to the third Monday in February, giving government employees a three-day weekend. But even though Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday were only days apart, Congress refused to combine them into President's Day, though that's what many Americans do. So if you work for the government, you'll get a day off for Washington's birthday. If you don't, you may get a day off for President's Day. Those, after all, are the precedents. <laughs> If you're planning a vacation for spring break and thinking of somewhere exotic, you might ask yourself why someone would spend $300 to sleep in a treehouse. I guess the answer lies in where the treehouse is, what kind of view it has, and how you get to it. Our 10 out of 10 feature takes us to Laos, a Southeast Asian country that's 68% forest. While you're given the chance to see the apes, actually given to see them isn't a given. And if you tried and failed, you might feel like giving up. But sooner or later, they might be given in before you're given out, and then you can all give in a selfie before you have to be given back home. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.